pilt. Okay, and it's recording. So I see students coming in. So I think, but um, I don't, I don't know how to let them in. Are they in in? Mm -hmm. I just don't know if they can hear us. Yeah, I believe they can. Okay. Then I think we're going to get started. All right. Um, Good. There is I don't see a um, announcement screen, so I'm just going to start. Okay. I have my PowerPoint ready to go, so Perfect. whenever you're ready. Hi, everyone. Uh, as you continue to join us, I just want to uh, give you a few housekeeping announcements before our hosts get started here from Marist. Uh, first, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type in your questions uh, to our presenters. Your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So please use the Q&A button if you have a question. Um, it, the session is being recorded, so uh, if students could not join live, they can join later. This is one of many different sessions, so be sure to check out the full schedule at NACAC.org. So that's N-J-A-C, I'm sorry, N-J-A-C-A-C.org, which is N-J-A-C-A-C.org. And now I'm going to turn it over to our presenter, from Marist. There you go. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening uh, and taking a little time out of your day to learn about Marist College. Uh, so I do have um, a short presentation. And then as uh, we mentioned earlier in the introduction, please use the Q&A a portion of the Zoom webinar to ask any questions as I will be going through them at the end of the presentation. So um, uh, again, welcome to Marist College's uh, room <laughs> virtually and welcome to Marist College virtually. Uh, I'm so excited to meet all of you. My name is Gina Jadelis. I am the Marist College admission counselor. I grew up in Scotch Plains, New Jersey, so I am a true Jersey girl. Um, and I also graduated from Marist in 2018 with a degree in public relations and a minor in fashion merchandising. Uh, during my time at Marist, I was able to study abroad in, at our campus in Florence, Italy. I had three, to, uh, three different internships and I made lifelong friends and connections that really helped shape me into the person who I am today. And so I'm excited to share some brief information uh, with all of these uh, fellow Jersey families. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, there will be uh, use the Q&A box uh, because I will be answering those questions at the end or if not getting back to you tomorrow. Uh, but to get started, uh, for those of you who don't know, Marist is a small to medium sized private liberal arts college in Poughkeepsie, New York. No, this photo is not photoshopped. This is actually what the campus looks like right now with all the leaves changing and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I know a very popular way to get to Marist um, from New Jersey is through 287 and the leaves changing on that highway just makes it for an extremely scenic and beautiful drive. Uh, and this is the view right from our uh, library entrance uh, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful campus. Um, and so I'm gonna take you on a little, little video tour to show you. And so 
Again, Marist is located in Poughkeepsie, New York, right in the Hudson Valley. Our campus does sit right on the Hudson River, uh, and there's many different spots on campus where you can see the, the river, uh, whether it's from the library or residence halls on campus. And so uh, I also like to point out these are our newest residence halls, our North End housing for juniors and seniors. Uh, and we are happy to say that about, I would say around 85 to 90 percent of our students are on campus attending in class, uh, in class, in person classes. Um, and we are under 1% positive uh, for COVID. Uh, and, uh, I just want to really admire our students for how respectful they're being for all the guidelines and policies uh, through these times. So first, some quick fox facts. Uh, as I mentioned, Marist is a small to medium size uh, school. And so we do have about 5,000 students at the undergraduate level. We do have about 1,000 students at the graduate level. However, a majority of those students are taking classes online and at night to accommodate a full-time job. The programs that are typically housed on campus for our graduate programs are our Doctor to Physical Therapy program, our Physician's Assistant program, and our Education program. Other than that, the majority of the students who you see on our campus are those traditional undergraduate students. Because of our size, we are able to keep our classes on the relatively small side. On average, our class sizes are around 20 to 22 students. On the bottom here, you can see that our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. So at Marist, we really pride ourselves on having our professors and advisors and faculty members really build that relationship with our students. They're definitely going to know your name, they're going to know who you are, uh, and they're going to really build that relationship with you for, you know, the four years that you are a student at Marist. The next thing is I like to mention our majors and our academic programs. You can see here that we have over 40 different majors and on the next slide I list all of them. By no means is, am I going to go through all of the majors this evening. Uh, and again, please feel free to use the Q&A button because, or Q&A box, uh, as that's a great way to get some additional information about majors. But what I like to point out at this point is the academic flexibility that our students have. When you apply to Marist, you're applying to the college as a whole. This means a few different things. The first thing is that if you come in as our most popular major, undecided, you have the opportunity to test the waters in a few different areas and see which major is really the best fit for you. You can even participate in our undecided program called FOCUS. Maybe you come in like me and you think that you want to pursue one major and then you take some classes and you realize that that's actually not the major that you want to pursue. Uh, and that's certainly an option as well. Uh, so you can change your major without having to apply into a different school or program on campus. The only two majors we do require a supplement for are our studio art major and our fashion design major. Or if you want to double major or minor across different schools on campus, you have the ability to do that as well. Uh, and so again, we want to offer our students a lot of flexibility with their academic portfolio to really ensure that they are getting, receiving the education that they want to make them successful in the workforce. We are a geodiverse campus with 47 out of the 50 states represented and 64 different international countries. So not only will you be meeting students from all over the, the country, but all over the world as well. 96% of first year students do choose to stay on campus. Uh, and so by no means is Marist a suitcase school or a commuter based school. Uh, you will see that Marist is always coming up with new ideas to engage our community. Uh, so whether that is having virtual programming this week, we're having cheat codes uh, virtually have a concert for us, Jonathan Vaness is coming to campus virtually this, uh, this semester, we're doing pumpkin painting, we're doing stuff a, stuff a fox, um, so many different opportunities to still engage with the community while practicing social distancing. A very important figure that I hope that you take away from this presentation is that 98% of our students are employed or attending graduate school within six months of graduating from the college. Uh, I attribute this success to the mentorship that we're able to offer our students, our emphasis on internships, the proximity and relationships that we have in New York City and Manhattan, our study abroad opportunities that help our students grow their, and expand their perspective, and our core curriculum, which allows our students to become critical thinkers and strong communicators and overall well-rounded individuals. 
Also at Marist, it's very important to us that we are making sure that you are graduating on time. From your very first semester at Marist, you will be coming up with something called a four-year plan. The idea behind that four-year plan is that from very early on, you are thinking about all the opportunities that you have at Marist, whether that is taking on an internship, maybe one, two, or three. If you're undecided, what is that career, that academic path going to look like? Uh, and so we want you to plan for these opportunities and these classes with the help of your academic advisor and first-year mentor to ensure that you're going to stay on track in those four years. It's always better to have a plan than to not have a plan um, and then find out that you're kind of stuck in a pickle if you want to take advantage of one of those opportunities, but you didn't plan for it. And so, as I mentioned, Marist has over 40 different majors and programs. Marist also has concentrations in specific majors. So you might be interested in journalism. That would actually fall under our School of Communication in the Arts specifically a major in communications with a concentration in journalism. Uh, so again, I encourage students to look at concentrations as well, um, because sometimes you might be looking for something that we have, but it's just not titled the way that you may think. And it is really important to note that Mar the Marist education is much more than just lectures in a classroom. And yes, you are going to learn in a very traditional way in some aspects, but we also want our students to import, have hands-on learning, that sometimes learning is going abroad or networking with our alumni network or using our resources on campus. We have so many. We have two full studios. We have a sports communication center in our brand new McCann Arena. We have state-of-the-art uh, research labs for our science students. We have two psychology labs for students in the School of so uh, Social and Behavioral Sciences. We have a brand new steel plant studio for our fashion and art students, which includes a 3D maker space, brand new sewing labs, a brick and mortar store for our, our students who are interested in running a boutique. And these are just some examples of the hands-on learning that we have at Marist. Uh, and really there's so many more, but it is very important to note that we do have many different ways in which we're preparing students, not only for the industry and their future success, um, but also helping them grow personally and professionally during their time at Marist. And Marist truly is a community. And some of the best lessons that I've learned through my time at Marist, we're not only just in the classroom, but we're through campus involvement and through meeting a really amazing people in a variety of different ways. Marist opened so many different doors for me, uh, whether that was going to the New Hampshire primaries with the Marist Institute for Public Opinion, or going to Alabama to do a service trip with Habitat for Humanity, uh, or joining my sorority and meeting some of my best friends. So there's so many different ways to get involved in the Marist community and you truly will feel at home. In terms of some applying to Marist, we do have three different decision deadlines. The first one being November 15th, and then February 1st and March 1st. In terms of November 15th, that would be our early decision and early action deadline. Early decision, both early decision one and two are a binding agreement where you are 110% committed to attending Marist. If you are accepted through early decision, it is the expectation that you are withdrawing your application through for other institutions and you are committed to becoming a red fox. Early action is an applicant pool where you have the opportunity to apply to Marist early. You find out early, but then have until May 1st or a deposit deadline to make your final college decision. We actually pushed our regular decision pool back this year to March 1st, it's normally February 1st, because we were hearing from students that they simply needed more time. They wanted more time to visit campus. They wanted more time to take the SATs or ACTs. Maybe they wanted to highlight some other senior year accomplishments. And we understand that. We are all in this together. Uh, and so we pushed back our regular decision deadline to offer students more time. We reviewed through all of our applicant pools equally. Uh, so it really is the best fit for the student. In terms of our admission profile, uh, we are looking for that 87 to 93 student unweighted. We are also going to look at your high school profile and the strength of your curriculum uh, and take that into account as well. 
in terms of test scores, I know that there is a lot of anxiety over standardized testing this year, and I totally understand. Uh, in terms of test scores, what I want to point out is that Marist has been test optional for the past 10 years. This is not a result of the pandemic, uh, but is rather actually well integrated into our review. So for Marist, if you are able to take the test, um, and you feel that your scores are an accurate representation of your academic abilities, feel free to submit your scores and we will consider them. Uh, if you are unable to take the test or you don't feel confident in your scores, do not be afraid to go test optional. About 50% of each class um, in the past few years has applied test optional. Um, and so you are equally considered for acceptance and merit scholarship. At Marist, we do have a holistic review process, uh, and so that is one component of the review, but certainly not the be-all, end-all. And we are open for visits. We do have in-person visits. Uh, we have a very traditional information session and guided tour from one of our tour guides. Uh, and of course, it's going to be social dis socially distant. Uh, and we also have uh, just tours. Uh, so I know so many students have been so great about doing research over the summer on different colleges. Uh, so maybe you attended one of our virtual information sessions and now you just want to see the campus. So we do have a beautiful sunset tour. Uh, we also have tour only options. We also are still continuing those virtual programs, both information sessions and then student life panels. And then we do have self-guided tours. If uh, We both have a driving tour where we provide you audio uh, and you can drive around campus and learn about Marist and we have a self-guided walking tour. I do suggest that if you come to visit Marist, uh, email me and see if I'm going to be in the office that day or I could even give you some lunch recommendations. As I mentioned, Mar Marist in the fall is absolutely beautiful. It's such a great time to be outside, enjoy the beautiful weather, enjoy the leaves, and to really see the interaction of students even in these really unique times. Uh, so definitely feel free to reach out. I'm going to be sharing my email on the next slide. And so, uh, if, as I mentioned, if you have any questions throughout the process, please feel free to reach out to me. That is what I am here for. I'm here to be a resource throughout the college search process. And so with that, I am going to be going to the Q&A um, and answering any questions that we have. So I'll just give you all a moment just to, um, to come up with any questions. And I, so one question we received is, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the FOCUS program? The FOCUS program is for our undecided students. Uh, and this is a program which offers a lot of support for those students to really discover their strengths, their passions, and then what career options there are for students. So this is a four credit program. The way it is split up is that there is a one one credit class, uh, where, which is a career development class. Um, personally, I took this as an elective. I found it extremely helpful as I was, as part of that class was networking with alums, uh, really revamping my resume to make sure that it's appropriate for my field, um, and just overall preparing me to apply to internships. The other component of this class is a three credit uh, focus class, uh, where you will be paired with an with a undecided advisor and then also there's students who will assist you as well. Uh, and part of that process is, as I mentioned, really discovering different aspects about yourself. So really looking at your strengths, looking at your interests, finding out more about those career opportunities that may be, that may fall under both of those umbrellas. You will go through the course catalog and cross off different classes that don't interest you and then review the ones that do. Uh, and so this is really for a student who really is unsure really completely unsure of what they want to do and really wants to dig deep uh, in the world of undecided. Many of our students walk away from this experience really positive with their major and really thanking the FOCUS program 
for the support that they offered uh, as they didn't feel that they were wasting time during their freshman year taking courses to test them out uh, and then later on deciding not to pursue that major. Hi, I'm interested in sports management. Is there any information you can give me or send me? So at Marist, uh, we actually do not have sports management as a major, um, but hold on just one second. We do have business administration. Um, and as our Dean likes to mention, running a sports company, a, a sports team is the same as running any major company. And that's why we don't have a specific sports ma management major, uh, but what, rather we would want you to major in in business administration uh, to kind of give you a broader foundation. And so you can concentrate in marketing or finance. And then I also tell students who are interested in sports management that you can also look into our sports communication program. That would fall under a different school, uh, the School of Communication and the Arts versus our School of Management. Um, and our sports communication program is a really unique program where students have the opportunity to go on the road with our Division I athletic teams. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we have a brand new ESPN studio with professional equipment uh, so that students can stream the, live stream the games and have their radio sh talk shows and work with um, our partner ESPN on broadcasting the games and getting that experience as well. So again, applying to Marist, you have that benefit of either creating a double major or creating a major and a minor academic study to really kind of create your own sports management academic program. What is campus life like? What, are, what about the area around campus? This is a great question. Uh, so at Marist, we have over 80 different clubs and organizations. So again, you're never going to be bored on campus. And what I do like to mention about uh, clubs and activities is that there is always something for someone. Uh, but if not, and if you have a new idea and you don't see it on campus, you can work with student government to create that club or campus and by uh, campus organization. So the, typically the first week of each semester, we hold a club and activities fair. I really like to mention that they offer it each semester because you might find out about something during the spring uh, or your second semester at Marist and then you're able to sign up for it at a later date and you may not have known about it earlier. Uh, and so you go to the club fair and you get to meet all of the different students in the different clubs and find out all of the different clubs that we have at Marist. We truly have so many. We have political based clubs, we have academic based clubs, we have Greek life, we have music groups, we have intramural sports, we have a crafting club, we have our student programming council. So many different things to explore uh, and connect with others on campus and really find your group or your place in the community. And so uh, that's the first way of getting involved. And typically those clubs and campus on campus like to hold events at night and during the weekends because that this way it doesn't conflict with any classes. Uh, and so that is the first thing about campus life and what is there to do. I also want to give a shout out uh, to Housing, who has amazing RAs who are always thinking about different activities that they can have for their students. Um, I personally will never forget the Halloween party that we had my freshman year in my residence hall, uh, the fact that they would do midnight pancakes and midnight waffles, especially during finals and midterms, uh, just to give you a little break uh, and put a smile on your face and give you that midnight snack. Uh, and it was a great way to meet others in my residence hall that I didn't know uh, before that event. As I mentioned, some of the organizations on campus will also do uh, different trips. I was able to go to the New Hampshire primaries with my employer of three years on campus, the Marist Poll. Um, I will also, I also like to mention I went to Alabama with Habitat for Humanity. Campus Ministry typically does a trip to Mexico. Uh, so there's so many different things that you can get involved in and you never know what doors those may open. Finally, uh, areas around campus, uh, there's always things to explore. Uh, I always say that as you grow on campus, so is your radius off campus. Uh, so we do have um, a really amazing city of Poughkeepsie. Uh, the Culinary Institute is about five minutes away uh, and students are so lucky because many culinary alums will stay in the area and open fabulous restaurants. Uh, and so there's always different places to explore and eat. 
we have the walkway over the Hudson, which is the longest walking bridge in the country. Uh, and then we have great towns such as Beacon, New Paltz, and Rhinebeck, which are only about 25, 30 minutes away. Do a lot of people go home on the weekends? What do people who stay on campus do on the weekends? Uh, so kind of just what I was speaking about, um, a lot of students do not go home on the weekends. Uh, as I mentioned, we are not a suitcase school or a commuter-based school. Uh, we are open for visits on the weekends. Uh, and so I would encourage you to come and visit campus during the weekend so that you can see how students are interacting, what they're doing on campus uh, to keep themselves busy, what type of events we're having. And I also encourage you to look at the Marist Instagram and the Marist Student Activities Instagram because they will post events. You know, as I mentioned, Jonathan Vaness from Queer Eye is, come, is doing a virtual event on campus. Uh, so when that is going to happen, when Cheat Codes is going to come. Typically we have alumni event and family weekend. Obviously this, um, this year we limited those events to try to limit how many people were coming to campus. Um, but Typically, that also brings a lot of excitement. We have our sports teams who come and play. Again, uh, not happening, the, happening this semester, but does happen each year um, and is another thing to do. Uh, and so weekends are really used for that social time so that it's not conflicting with classes. And so whether it's a club fundraiser, a club event, or, or, or something that you're doing on your own, typically we have $25 Broadway trips. Uh, we do ski trips as well. So there's lots of things to keep you busy on the weekends. Can you enter a particular school, such as the School of Business or Communications, as undecided? Or can you not enter any of these schools until a major is decided? This is another great question. Uh, so at Marist, you can actually apply undecided communications or undecided school of management um, because maybe you're thinking, oh, I wanna try the school of management. I think that's where I am going to belong, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, and so you do have the opportunity to apply undecided school of management and we will put, since we make your schedule for you your first semester, we pu will put you in business 100 and then you have the opportunity to decide if that's the right fit for you or to go into a different school on campus. Can you expand on your study abroad experience? I absolutely can. So I was extremely fortunate to go abroad to our campus in Florence, Italy during my junior year fall semester. Um, and so, as, as I said, I was extremely fortunate. And I know that this is something uh, that may be a little bit foreign to us <laughs> right now, but I promise, I, you know, I really hope that this is an opportunity uh, that our prospective students get to experience and our current students who are at our campus right now get to experience as well. I went to our Florence campus and I was able to go to nine different countries and 20 uh, cities during my 15 weeks that I was there. Again, I was extremely fortunate that I was able to do that. And I was also abroad at our Florence campus with about 120 other Marist students. Uh, so it was really great to walk around the streets of Florence and to see my friends wearing a Marist shirt. And it kind of made me feel like I was at home in a sense. Uh, I always like to mention as well that one of the classes I took when I was there was my science core requirement, uh, which was a cooking class in the central market of Florence. I wore my chef jacket, chef hat every Monday night, and that was how I made my dinner. I like to share this because we do have a core curriculum at Marist uh, since we are a liberal arts school. Uh, and I like to share this because it tells you about the unique opportunities that you have when you're abroad, but it also lets you know that the core is not something that you, you should be afraid of, um, that we do have non-traditional courses to fulfill those core requirements, but ultimately we want you to have that core liberal arts background so that you are critical thinkers, so that you are well-rounded. Uh, studying abroad, really did open my eyes to a variety of different life lessons. My friend took out $800 in a foreign currency. Um, so that certainly, you know, helped me learn how to travel abroad. It helped me realize that sometimes things are out of our control. If a flight is delayed, a flight is delayed and there's nothing that you can do about it. Um, and so it definitely helped me gain some independence and and learn what it was like to live in a global community. Uh, that was my own personal study abroad experience was going to our Florence campus and I really loved it and I really enjoyed it. 
I like to tell prospective students frequently that we have many other countries that you can visit. Uh, I had friends go to Hong Kong and Paris and Spain and Ireland uh, and go to those countries and thrive as well. Some students want to live with a host family. Some students want to take classes in the native language. Some students want to go to a specific country because that's the best fit for their program. Uh, so there's many different options, very similar to our activities fair or a college fair. We also have a study abroad fair, and I do encourage students to look at that. Um, it is relatively easy to study abroad, uh, at, especially at Florence. And I think sometimes students just think that we have our own campus and, oh, I'm just going to go to Florence, but really there may be other, other great fits for you. The last thing about studying abroad at Marist is that we always have a variety of uh, short-term study abroad programs as well, uh, where we would have the course at our New York campus, such as history of Irish culture, and then you would go to Ireland after the semester's over and see the places that you talked about over the duration of the semester. So this is a really great option for a student who may find it difficult to fit a whole semester in their schedule or for a student who doesn't want to spend 15 weeks abroad, um, but still wants to get a taste of that experience. We also have two full year programs, uh, both in one in Dublin, Ireland, and one in at our Florence campus in Italy. Uh, so there is an interview required for that program, uh, but this is for a student who is ready to immerse themselves in the global community. Uh, this is a student who, is, who wants to get out there, and we typically have 30 to 40 students participate in each of those programs each year. So you will be with a cohort of other students going abroad, making these life-changing memories, creating these lifelong friends, and then transitioning back to campus your sophomore year with those uh, fellow students. And many of those first-year students who study abroad will also go abroad again at, at another point. So that's definitely possible if that's something you're interested in. What are the required classes in freshman and sophomore year? We only have one required course uh, for first-year students, and that is our first-year seminar. Our first year seminar is designed to teach you what it is like to be an upperclassman at Marist. So what is it like to write a 20 page research paper? What is it like to use our library resources and find peer reviewed journal articles? What is it like to give a 30 minute presentation on that paper that you wrote? And so we typically like to make these topics really fun uh, since, since you are learning these these new skills. Um, and so they can be anything from the zombie apocalypse to Pirates of the Caribbean to I took an art history based one, that 70s show, Make America Green Again. So there's so many different ones based on your interests and during orientation is when you would pick that out. That is the only required class uh, for first year students. We also do have a class called Writing for College. At times, some students may be able to opt out of that or may be able to place out of that class, um, but that would be another one. And then typically first year students will also take philosophy, but that's not required for you to take your freshman or sophomore year, but rather it is uh, suggested as it is one of your core classes. I would also suggest to take uh, either whatever your discipline is, level 100, to see if that's something you like. You don't have to declare your major until the end of your sophomore year, but again, you, you want to take major-related classes early on, your freshman, especially your freshman year, to make sure you're in the right major and make sure that you're on the right academic path. What is your diversity rate? Do you have clubs or organizations for Black and other students of color? So in the past few years, we have really increased our diversity on campus. Um, two years ago, we welcomed our most diverse class yet uh, on campus. We have 24% of our students identifying of students of color. We do have clubs and organizations, uh, not only for students uh, who would identify themselves as black, but also for other groups on campus. Uh, again, whether that's religious, whether that's racial, uh, we have an um, an LGBTQ club on campus. We have allies on campus. We have a multicultural office on campus as well that works with our students of color and from different backgrounds uh, and also works to 
create events on campus to help bring the community together. Um, one that really stands out to me was during my junior year, they held amazing Diwali events uh, just to educate the entire community about that part of their culture, uh, of, of culture and had different gallery expositions and had different interactive things that you could have done. Um, and had different food that food tastings um, and one of my professors was involved in it and so I went to support her and ended up learning a whole so many different things about um, that that event so yes there are plenty of different ways to uh, learn about different cultures on campus and different di um, and certainly we do have multicultural affairs uh, which will help uh, talk and educate our campus community about diversity. Can I still do the focus program and enter undecided in a particular school? Yes, you can. Uh, and so, you know, this is a personal option. Uh, personally, I came into Marist and I had two kind of different options or two different programs I was interested in. So I took um, I came in as a history major. I thought I wanted to be a history teacher. And so um, for me, I took a history class. Uh, and then kind of as my backup, I was thinking about communication in the arts or fashion merchandising. Uh, and so I took a history class and then I ended up changing into communication in the arts. I just realized I didn't want to become a history teacher. Um, and so that's certainly possible. Um, I do find that the FOCUS program does have a lot of support. And so for a student who is kind of in my situation um, where they have an inkling that they, they think they know what they want to do, but they're just not 110% committed yet, um, that they typically find the FOCUS program almost too much support. Um, but you can certainly always try it uh, and then see if it, if it works for you. I'm going to take a breather while I wait some, for some more questions, but these have all, I think, been really great questions so far. Um, I'm enjoying answering them, and I think that they are extremely beneficial for others who are listening in or, or who may see the recording later on. So definitely feel free to keep ans uh, asking those questions. While I'm waiting on some more questions to come in, uh, one thing I do want to, because um, I know that there are so many questions right now regarding COVID, is just tell you about some of our policies and something uh, and some actions that we've put in place on campus. Uh, so we are extremely fortunate that one of our professors in the School of Science uh, holds is an expert on disease control, uh, and so she worked with us to make sure that we were, you know, really not only meeting our guidelines, but really going above and beyond. So all of our classes uh, are sanit desanitized in between the classes changing. They, there is a, uh, not desanitized, disinfected, sorry, um, with sanitizer. Um, and there is a sign, there is a switchboard on each classroom door that says if it's disinfected, yes or no. Uh, we also, as I mentioned, have one-way hallways. Our dining hall has been amazing and has been delivering the food to students and kind of a Grubhub delivery service and has been pre-preparing that food for our students. Uh, we are uh, doing classes in person, but there are times when it may be a hybrid model. Uh, we are going to be closed after Thanksgiving to and move 100% virtual to ensure that we're limiting travel and how, how students may uh, come into contact with many other people uh, during their time at home. Uh, but to make up some of that in-person time, we have been holding classes on Saturdays. Uh, so that is just a little bit of information about our COVID policies. We do have more information on our website, um, but I just wanted to mention that as you know, you continue to ask questions. How many, how many students often take internships while they are at Marist? This is another great question. 83% of our students perform at least one internship during their four years at Marist. Uh, as I mentioned, we do really have an em emphasis on internships and hands-on experience at the college. So part of the success of our internship program is with our Center for Career Services. 
they do resume workshops. They will take uh, trains, uh, they will take a group of students into New York City and shadow different industries, uh, whether that's major publishing houses, Madison Square Garden and their accounting firm, uh, going to Fortune 500 companies, fashion companies, they have many great connections. They also do a job and internship fair uh, where 40 different employers, around 40 different employers come to campus. IBM, Target, Indeed, PVH, which owns Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger, come to campus to recruit our students uh, for their internship and job openings. And so that all falls under the Center for Career Services. Another really great piece of support with our internship programs are our internship coordinators. Our internship coordinators are in faculty members in each individual school or program who is specific to your industry because the field work that is required of a social work major is very different than the internship experience of a fashion merchandising student. The way their resumes are going to look is even going to be different. So we want to make sure that we're giving that individual attention specific to your field. And so, your internship coordinator, again, is the expert on internships in your field. They know when applications are going out. They will email you the application. They know the right buzzwords that you need to be using in that application so computers can pick up on them and make you a competitive applicant. They will do practice interviews and resume workshops with you as well. Uh, I like to share my, my friend's story, Brooke. Uh, she really has a dream of being on camera and I don't doubt that one day she will be an anchor on Good Morning America. Um, but, you know, she majored in communications and public relations and journalism uh, and worked with our internship coordinators to get her first internship uh, with Long Island News. Uh, and sure enough, she was, um, we saw her on camera uh, during, I believe, her sophomore year. And then she went on to Yahoo Finance. Then she made another connection and helped get an internship at ABC7 Eyewitness News. And then she used her Marist alum contacts to get an internship at NBC with Seth Meyers. So you can see how each experience built upon one another. Again, she used the support of our internship coordinators uh, within the School of Communication and the Arts. But now our internship coordinator also knows the experience that Brooke had to get that very competitive internship with Seth Meyers and can advise other students accordingly. So we are almost out of time. I want to um, ask if there's any other last minute questions. Uh, again, my contact information is on the website. My name is Gina uh, Jadelis. I am the only admission counselor for New Jersey. Uh, so if you go on our website uh, and look at Marist Admission Counselors, I'm, I'm your girl. Um, my email is also my first dot last name at maris.edu so g-i-n-a dot j-a-d-e-l-i-s at maris.edu uh, we do have an, another three or so minutes uh, for any other last minute questions but again i just wanted to give that contact information uh, just in case um, and i do encourage you to reach out throughout the process so that i get to know you uh, so that so that hopefully I'll see you at some of the high school visits that I still have coming up uh, in, the, in the next month or so. Um, and again, be a resource for you in this college search process. All right, Gina, I'm going to say thank you to all our guests today for joining us. Uh, when uh, you close this window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can provide. Again, this was also just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at njacac.org. Um, and in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings on njacac.org. Thank you, Gina. No problem. Have a nice night, everyone. Thank you.